Hi, today we're going to focus on using Padlet to promote this course in your classrooms. There's a little bit of a focus on writing in this one, and if you want to talk about Padlet for math classes, please hop over to view my other video. Let's get started. As you see, I went to Padlet.com to, to begin. Padlet allows you to sign up for free, but only allows you for a limited number of Padlets to create total. If you want more, you can either sign up for the full account or you could continue re-editing the same Padlets and use them for a variety of classes. I started by creating a Padlet to show to you guys. Let me show you what I began with. So to edit Padlets, you hit this little gear guy in the corner. I can fix the title by typing right here. I got there by clicking. I can fix the description to right over here. I actually made a mistake. Let's do sentence starters. I like to put the prompt in the description this way, if a student missed class or they're doing this at homework, the instructions for what they need to do are clearly posted. You can change the emoji. This is fun. It pops up right over here, also over there. I switched it to pencil because of a writing. And as you can see, the address link is right here. You can change the appearance, the wallpaper, the color, or the font. However, down here is the most important part of this Padlet, so I want to go over each part. Firstly, I always make sure attribution is on. When students are posting, I want to make sure that they own their ideas and know who else is posting to create a sense of community. This is important. Secondly, I'm always careful to think about the post position. I generally choose last. This is because if I post some type of introduction, each post is going to appear to the right of it, right? The last post. This way, when lots of students have posted, my introduction stays in this top left-hand corner rather than kind of moving down the line to the end where students might not see it. So make sure to think about this while you're creating your Padlet. I always allow comments because I want students to promote discourse. And you can choose if you want students to have reactions or not. In this case, I chose like. The only one that I don't like using so much is the upvotes or downvotes, because I feel like downvotes downplay students' ideas. And when we're in a classroom, we want students to be learning and trying to figure out what works for them. So th there really isn't any bad ideas. Finally, depending on your classroom, think about if you need approval or filtering profanity from your students. Now let's talk about how you could use it for discourse. It says I have unsaved changes. I might have changed something, so I'm gonna just click save. And now I can get rid of the side screen. So as you can see, I put the prompt up here. It says, please use the sentence starters we discussed in class to post a comment and respond to two other classmates' posts. I really like this because we have the structures for how students to post are supposed to post right here. Therefore, when a student comes to this Padlet, they can click plus to create a comment, and they already know exactly how they're supposed to write in this box. Once they've created their comment, it says respond to two other classmates' posts. The sentence starters are still right here, so they can respond just by hitting comment and saying something like, so you are saying, and then paraphrasing their idea. By having very clear instructions for the expectations of students' comments and posts, students can engage in creative discourse while also having some flexibility in what they want to say. This way, if you're online or teaching in an online setting and students are uncomfortable communicating or they don't want to turn on their microphones or they might have background noise from siblings or other stuff going on, you can take your whole class and drop them over to this Padlet and have them actively engaging in conversation in class. This tool is especially strong because students who are absent can still come in onto this Padlet and asynchronously add to their ideas. Finally, if you want to give this Padlet or this sense of discourse as homework, this can work as an asynchronous task where all the students come in and periodically check and post things and respond to each other. I find this tool very strong because it has the structure to promote discourse while also allowing for clear communication. The Padlets, in this case, I chose them to line up clearly, but there are a few other options that you'll see when you go and create your own Padlet to kind of have them move in different spaces if you didn't like. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please go and check out some of my other videos, like my channel, and subscribe. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. If you want any other ideas for specific videos, also put them in the comments. All right. Have a great day.